Mind you, we swore an oath of loyalty, but the rust still deceived us. It's not more speeches in the Senate that will change the world. Rome is dying. My legions are mustering as swiftly as possible. Senators, welcome back to episode 12 in my Stellaris Roman Empire campaign. In the last episode, we encountered many new alien species and empires, so much of which over 50% of the galaxy's empires are now aware of each other, and this has prompted the formation of the Galactic Community, a sort of Galactic Senate that can pass resolutions, vote on them, deny them, block each other, call in favors, and enter in things into a Galactic Law that all within the community must abide by. We've entered ourselves into this community as we are no stranger to politics, and this is just one more political arena of which we will inevitably dominate. Now to catch you up on what else has been going on in the campaign, we currently have our colony ship, the Akia, heading down to the Canandria system as there is a 22-sized tundra world down here, which isn't on the face of it very habitable, but of course we are carrying the new bowel life seeding decision which we can enable to create one of our very own Gaia worlds in the Gaia sector. Further to that, we have a fleet on the way down south to deal with the crystalline shardlings that are present in the Lyrum system. Faustus Novius is on the case. Now, of course, we are no friend of crystalline entities. If you remember back to Tiberium, the ancient sovereign seemingly materialized out of nowhere and rained crystalline hellfire down on the planet, which we have not forgotten, which is still there, and we are still busy uprooting constantly, which actually creates us a little bit of a rare crystal income. So we've now studied these, we understand them a little bit better, we've got some crystal forge plating as an option in technology and uh, technology research, but we're going to come down and clear the system so we can actually uh, prop up a star base there and deal swift Roman justice to any crystalline entities we ever come by. And speaking of swift Roman justice, we were also paid another visit to by the Vazarin Hegemony. Of course, they opened up a subspace rift over here in the west of the system, pushed across the system, destroying our trade hub, our multiple trade hubs here at the starbase, and then raining fire down on Augusta, just doing untold amounts of devastation to the planet and also killing billions of people. Many have theorized that this is a direct result of destroying a temple on one of our other planets. Other senators are saying this is just spiritualist nonsense it remains to be seen we have been attacked before the gods do seem potentially angry with us but at the same time they seem to have blessed us bonadea of course with the life seeding of the gaia worlds whereas perhaps maybe i don't know mars or vulcan want revenge and retribution and that's pretty much everything we need to catch up on one other thing worth mentioning of course is that our emperor Emperor Tiberius XIV, the second emperor that we had passed away at the age of 85. He was our warlike emperor. We now have Princess Appia III reeling, Empress Appia III. And she is an industrialist. She is a fertility preacher. She is a world shaper. Very important on that one, world shaper. So she has better clear tile blocker costs and better terraforming speeds. Now, I don't know how fast the Gaia world's going to get created, but with her in charge, it should be faster. Unless it's instant. Some people said it was instant. I don't know if they literally mean instant or it's just really quick. We'll find out about that. But the further further to her agenda or her traits as a person, I think we're going to go with the next Ascension perk and it's going to be Mastery of Nature. It was one I was kind of leaning towards, but now with Empress Appia in charge, I think it only makes too much sense to use it. Although we mastered the nature of our homeworld long ago, the alien biomes we have since encountered present new challenges. They too shall be overcome. And this is clear tile blocker cost is reduced 33%. Mastery of nature is a decision which allows us to increase the districts of a planet by two. If you remember, we're using a mod that allows us to get more pop growth the more empty districts we have. So this is potentially a nice little thing as well to increase like the amount of pops we can grow on planets. Uh, so I think it's actually going to be quite a powerful one to take for this particular playthrough. I didn't see many comments about it. Maybe I missed them, but I, I was looking to see people mentioning Ascension perks. Didn't see anything about it. But speaking of comments and speaking of Augusta, 
We have got one to read out. On the matter of the attack on Augusta, the Empire has twice failed to defend citizen lives and property and has displayed utter apathy toward learning anything about the enemy responsible. A healthy economy is not enough. A powerful fleet is a necessity. Failure to maintain defenses sufficient to defeat invaders is a failure to govern. And that is from Senator Ray. Yep, so many people have been calling for this in the Senate. Understand the attacks, strengthen the defenses, understand the subspace rift. The reason we haven't is because we are up against it. We had a war with the Tyrian Republic, and who knows whether or not we'd have a war with Site 10667 Override or the Nrilga Swarm. So all of my physics research was focused on improving the weaponry, improving the kind of capabilities of our fleet. Of course, if we are to understand these things, that means postponing technological research for physics. So we'll do that probably once we just finish the applied quantum physics, which gives us a little bit of an extra increase to physics from our uh, science labs. All right, so I'm just going to change that song. Ooh, what is this? Dark world. Let's just keep going. It's a bit of a military one. I've added some new songs to the playlist. And another thing, in case I sound a little different... I have a headset on, a new headset, where I just, I'm basically deaf. I cannot hear myself. And it's so awkward to talk. I mean, it's a great headset and sound quality is awesome, but I cannot hear myself. I have to speak really loudly. And even then I'm like, I might miss, I, I, if you don't really hear what you're saying, you kind of like half say words sometimes when you listen back to it. It's difficult. So I'm struggling through that right now. So bear, bear with me, I'm trying to improve. And just get better at speaking and just trusting that I know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'll listen back to this and just be all gibberish. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's follow the fleet. We're heading down to Lyrum. The only other thing I did elsewhere was basically um, just queued up some buildings. Actually, these are all queued up already. I queued up one on Terra, a city district. Did some renaming, I think. Oh, no. I Yeah, I did. And then I just reloaded the saves. Wasn't happy with something. Uh, so, yeah. Let's just rename it now. So, this is the Baronic Station. And where is this? We just need to rename it off to the planet that's in here. Augusta, yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Alright, Augusta. That's the Augusta station. This is going to be the Terra station. And this is just to give us a basic understanding of what these places are. The Nishman system, which is, of course is now Gaia. And the sector needs to be renamed as well. Okay. Oh yeah, we still have to investigate the moon here. <clears throat> So let's go to planets and sectors. So this is Gaia Magna. I'm actually going to call it Magna Gaia. I don't really fully understand why some things like Magna Gratia had the Magna first, but there's some other things that have the Magna afterwards. Magna Gaia sounds better to me than Gaia Magna. <laughs> so that's what my logic on that. Um, but, you know, let me know in the comments and we'll change it accordingly. Um, okay, right. I think we're good to go. Let's the time play. So, of course, we're heading down to fight... The Shardlings. Should be an easy combat. Faustus Novius on the case. About to move to the Gaia system now. I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. So, I was also saying I was pretty happy with how we've left things. The economy has gotten way better now. Everything's in the positive. We can actually cancel this trade thing. We've got no monthly trades gone ongoing right now. Everything's positive. Uh, I'm pretty happy with all that, you know? All things considered. We're about to get this system up here, I think, as well. And then we're going to gift it to the Tyrian Republic and say, here you go. Have a little bit of territory. Things aren't so bad, you know? Construction complete. Gaia Starbase has finished its construction queue. I think we just got our crew quarters there. Yeah, cool. I got to say as well, sorry to break the immersion, but the headset I'm using, it sounds so good. Like the game has this like ambient just this ambient noise to it that wraps around me and this bass when clicking things like listening to that oh i'm hearing things i just never heard before so it's good so i am even more immersed that's kind of why i was like oh i'm gonna get some new music tracks and add them in as well we'll play one of my favorite ones my favorite one in the whole playlist is now has now been added as well all right here we go Every time we fight these, this is for Tiberium. I like to think maybe Faustus Novius, perhaps. Knew some people, maybe even lost some family members on Tiberium. 
Or at the very least, it's just personal because he is a Roman nationalist. Let's go, Faustus Novius. Attack! Engaging hostile fleets. Of course, we have the blue lasers now. Looking awesome. Look at that. Wiped out. Wiped out. And then we have extra debris down here. So, the cool thing about this is every time we take out crystalline entities, we actually progress our research for crystalline infused plating. Which I think is probably to do with this. This is crystal forged plating. This is small crystal infused plating. I'm assuming it's the same thing. And then regenerative hull tissue, which is also nice to get. All right, so the ship has done its job. They can go back to the guy station and wait here now. We just got that uh, crew quarter set up, so that's all queued up and nice for us. Our scientist, the exile, can head in here, get that debris, and then survey the system. And then our construction ship can come down and grab it. We're gonna grab this one first, maybe. Some alloys there to get. Oh yeah, something else I also realized is the Colonia Pacifica does not have a sector yet. Create a new sector. I think it's because it's one, two, three, four. It's six jumps away from Gaia. I think it needs to be within four. So unfortunately, it's just a little bit too far. So that's another sector separated out. And then we have to give it a governor. So it's just a planet on its own. What about tile blocker cost? Architectural interest? Let's get Governor Tiberia Volusena. Actually, she's 47. Maybe a little bit. No, she's pretty good, though. Let's get her. Tiberia Volusena. And there's trade to be grabbed here as well. We'll have to increase this and make a starport out here. So this trade can then filter to here and then that'll come back to Saul. This is gonna be a, a really busy lane in terms of piracy, I would imagine, because a lot of trade's gonna be coming back this way to make it to Saul. All right, anything else I'm forgetting immediately? Don't think so. Oh yeah, there is actually a couple things. <laughs> so we got Master of Nature, we press K, we can have our, yeah, so this is on the Augusta system. I laugh, but it's really not that, it's not a laughing matter at all. There's a bomb crater now after our raid from the uh, Vazaran hegemony. So we're gonna clear out that bomb crater. It would normally cost 800 energy, but it only costs us 200 because of Princess, or I keep calling the Princess, Empress Appia, as well as Mastery of Nature, and as well as the governor here, and then as well as, oh, that's it, yeah. So those three things. So we're heavily reducing it, which is awesome. Much cheaper, and then we can get rid of Toxic Kelp. So we saved a, a big awful cost in doing all that. Toxic kelp out here as well. So that's just queue of one. We don't have it for any other planets yet, so there we go. Alright, speed time up. By the way, in the next episode, the vote will be over for uh, the Kozier Trade League. I've taken a peek, and uh, it's extremely close. It's extremely close. By the time this episode goes up, you will still have a little bit of time left to vote if you haven't voted yet. So go check my Twitter, at ROP underscore tweets. There's been the record-breaking amount of votes, I think nearly 200 or something, so... It's so close, you know, like 10 votes would change it, potentially. So think about it. If you care about whether or not to allow migration between the Kozier Trade League or not. And they're still in their war, actually. Let's see how far along they are. The Defender is at 100% war exhaustion. So the Dagatani Kingdom are losing and they're at 100%. So they might get forced peace on them soon. So I have to see how that goes. I wonder what would happen. It's a Megacorp. Will they take territory or... Senate is now in session. Except this is the Galactic Senate, of course. So this is going to be for uh, forming the Galactic Market. And we haven't actually thrown in our vote here. We'll say yes. I think I'm in favor of the Galactic Market. Sometimes it's actually not a good idea, but it's overwhelming support here. So you kind of want to go in, and I think that actually gives you a little bit of a, an opinion benefit with all the people that are in here. We haven't, of course, read everything about every empire here yet. We will read some more as this uh, episode progresses. So that's all good. So we're voting there. You can oppose on this side, but you, have, you can only change your vote every 120 days. It's free to change your vote, which I think is a little strange, but... Um, yeah, and uh, so for those who don't know, I don't want to just sit back and explain all this right now. I'll explain it as we have a more interesting vote, and that'll like, really show you what's going on. But essentially, your diplomatic weight is what is added up versus the diplomatic weight of other people. So 
we're voting to go yes, and we have 800 current value. And that basically is coming from our fleet power, the amount of pops, our economy, and our technology. Whereas the Traxian Empire seem to be the thickest empire in the game, because they've got big fleet power, uh, big amount of pops, like they have 358 from pops, we 321, and so on and so forth. So you get the idea. So that's essentially how it works. The Dacorite fragments are deciding to abstain right now. They might change their mind later. Now up next will be, is regulatory facilitation. We should leave regulatory decisions to the experts. Industry leaders are the best qualified to identify wasteful regulations that impede productivity. Now, we can actually propose um, resolutions if we want. If we go to the resolution screen, we pick on one of these and then we chuck them in there. We could do that, but it costs influence. There's plenty to go through right now. I don't feel the need to actually propose any of my own yet. We'll just vote on others. And the ones that go to the top of the queue are the ones that basically have the most diplomatic weight behind them already. So you can already, before it goes into session, decide if you're going to support it or oppose it. Again, I find this pretty weird because it means that the top ones are always going to be the ones that are pretty much going to go through. So essentially what happens with the galactic community is we'll all be putting through the things that everyone kind of wants first. Pretty overwhelmingly. But then, as time goes on, we'll start progressing to the point where things are starting to be a bit more... Um, in favor of one empire or another, and way more closer to the vote. So the first few votes, for probably the first 10, I would say, are going to be fairly linear in terms of what people want. So for instance, regulatory facilitation is going to give us more diplomatic weight from economy, so whoever has economy is going to be voting, has more strength of their economy, so not everyone's votes are always the same. You might be thinking, well, Traxians are always going to be on top. Not necessarily. Maybe their economy isn't that good, it's only 220. Uh, so if we have, if we know someone who has a good economy, let's say the Mari, right, the Kosher Trade League here, they probably have a great economy, 293, whereas these guys had uh, 226. So these guys' economy is better, right, the the Mari. So if we vote on through this, they have 20% strength to their economy. So do these guys, but this is more beneficial to the Kosher. Hopefully that makes sense. I won't go on about it any further than that. Um, but this is a way that you can actually reduce, like eventually, like this, in, uh, this one for instance, Guardian Angels Act. The soldiers that dedicate their lives to keeping our planet safe should be recognized and honored. And this actually reduces the weight from fleet power. So whoever has the biggest fleet, it doesn't, their votes won't count for as much now if we pass this. Um, and we don't have one of the biggest fleets, so I'm always going to be in favor of these things to lower everyone else's weight based on their fleets until our fleet gets strong enough. You can work these back, they're not permanent. So that's kind of how it works. Hopefully that's a generalized explanation. It's good enough. Um, but anyway, for the first one, do we want to go with this straight away? Or do we want to think of something else that should go up first? We have... How much weight do we have? We have seven, 800. Just about 800. So if we were to, say, support this, for instance, this will pop up next before this one. So let's just have a look. This reduces pop consumer goods upkeep, but it also reduces weight from economy. I don't want that. What about this one? This one's pretty good. So weight from tech and research station output 10%, star basically. So I'll support this, boom, and this one's now moved up to here. So it wasn't enough to bring it all the way up, but for now, I'm pretty fine with that. So I'll just leave my vote there and I'll wait for this next thing to pop up. That's the one I want to go up next. Uh, I don't want this one to go up next. This one could probably go up though as well. Weight from economy, trade value, and then bureaucrat upkeep. So they have some benefits and they have some drawbacks. So we'll see how that goes. All right, cool. Hopefully that made sense to everybody, if you're a little unfamiliar. I know we have some people watching that haven't actually played the game yet. Oh, our colony ship is in position. Favonius. I should have really come up with a nice name for this one. Nova Egyptus. Sure. It's really going to be like Colonia Egyptus for now, and then we'll think about changing it. The reason, some people are like, oh, name a planet Rome. I just, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense to me, so I'm not going to do that. You know, Rome is on Terra. I don't think people would be like, yeah, that planet over there, that's called Rome. That'd be kind of weird. It'd be like naming a planet New York, you know, or something like that. It doesn't, that wouldn't really, I don't think that would work. Or London, for instance. Um... It's not like out of the realm possibility, I just don't see it happening. Uh, so we just got one of our techs done. Alloy Megaforges, so now we can... Oh yeah, that's pretty good. So let's see. Online. Our forge world is here. These can now be upgraded with a little bit more moats. Now we are producing moats. 
Are we? Are we not producing moats anywhere? I guess not. We'll have to- Oh, we are. On Gaia. So we are producing moats, very slowly. We're producing two per month. And when we reach... Uh, when we get 20 more, so let's say in 10 months just about. Or just under. We can then finally upgrade this. We can upgrade two of them. And we'll increase increase the amount of jobs here. Well, there'll be three more metallurgist jobs for each building. So we're just going taller then on the building. So we want to do that, obviously, on Elysium. So this place will be able to handle way more pops being grown here. Or created here in the future. Uh, okay. All good. Let's hit this. Tyrian Republic laid claim to the two system. That's okay. We're going to give it to you. They're going to be a bit rowdy and... Unhappy for a while, but uh, we'll give it to them. It's actually interesting. Some people also mentioned maybe we should integrate them, and I do believe. Why don't we have that option? Oh, we have the option in five months. So in five months we could integrate them, and we could see how long it will take. It says 130 influence. It's probably not that long. It's a low enough amount of influence there, because um, I think it's something like five influence per day, so or per month. So it wouldn't take that long. But anyway, that's maybe in future. But right now, they actually have a decent little fleet. And they'll definitely help. So I'm totally fine with them. So anyway, let's do a trade deal. Let's give them the two system. A little bit of alloys for them to help them with their military, maybe. And just, yeah, that's all. Not looking for anything back. Have it. Just take it. Just take it. There you go. Look at that. It grew your borders. Of course, they can't expand on their own. And uh, how long is the Senate in session? I should have read that before as well. I mentioned that. So the Senate's going to be in session for 1,300 days. It's kind of a ridiculously long amount of time. But uh, that's how long until this gets passed and the next one goes up. So we're going to be here for the long haul, just waiting for much of the basic stuff to be passed before more serious things get passed. Uh, the Tyrene have also claimed the trap system. They want more. Well, I'm not giving stands. you any more. <laughs> so. uh, an archaeological dig site is pending. And also... I should really close this and this. This guy is not excavating. All right. This is the broken world of the Astadine. The hidden facility on Astadine. Inside the building, there was a projector and many computers were creating the image of a broken planet. Few of those survived Astadines on the, of this planet seemed to have passed away as time passed. Let's turn off that pesky projector and search the computer's records. So this, of course, I actually... Holy, can't remember. I should, you know, read it again before the episode. This is something to do with like, oh, we've been looking at the, all the projectors on these planets, and this led us to this area, and then we're, we're we found a factory, and now we're in the factory, I guess. I think that's sort of it. We'll figure it out. Holy crap, Zaz! Whoa! Hang on. Inside the building, there was a projector, and many computers were creating the image of a broken planet. Few of those survived Astonines of this planet seem to have passed away as time passed. Let's turn off that projector and search the record. So this isn't really a broken world. It's actually a Gaia world. That's awesome. Holy shit. And we're not even done yet. Well, we're not going to land on that yet. Just because Wow, we're going to be like Gaia Central out here. This is awesome. So yeah, change to a Gaia world, and then there's physics research and energy credits increase here. Which is also so interesting because Tiberium, which is a tech world, has engineering research and society research. So now we're going to get physics on this one, I think. There was an equipment malfunction though as well, so it's, it's going to be a tough one. This is a hard one to break through apparently. Hidden world of the Astonine. Planet is not actually broken, it just looked like it. Um, what am I looking for? Yeah, engineering and society 20% here for tech, and then the other planet has the physics. It's kind of nice, it's like a little, they kind of catch each other up in a way. Wow. And don't forget, there's another world in here as well, which is a 13-slot uh, a tropical world. And allegedly, you know, the, the lore, I think, is supposed to be that the Baal created the Gaia Worlds. It's also kind of interesting. Alright, we should be in orbit. This should heal us up, uh, that last little bit of armor. 
and then make everything cheaper. Excellent. Good stuff. All right. Oh, this is so cool. Who just died? Envoy Bolesus Catius died at the age of 92. Wow, that's really old. They're automatically replaced. They decided for whatever reason, uh, the developers, not to... You don't recruit leaders that are envoys. You just send leaders off that are just generic leaders. They don't have traits or anything like that. But they do die and get replaced instantly. Not really too sure why. New technology discovered. All right, star base capacity increased. Three months to go, and then we're going to start researching the subspace rifts. Let's get some of these tile blockers. Ooh, terraforming. We don't really need terraforming, though, considering the um, stuff we have. Forest Tundra Mastering. I don't know if we'll need that. I wonder, do the tile blockers go away once you turn it into a Gaia world? I guess we'll find out soon. We have to wait for that colony to form. So in that case, I'm just going to go with something else instead. Um, claim influence cost. War exhaustion cost. Oh, I don't know. I'll go... Mm, I can't decide. I just feel like nothing is actually really that worth it. All right, let's just get the one of the tile blocker ones. Let's see what happens. Oh, I know what to do. Sorry. Let's check what she's got. Oh, no, she's just... Okay, fair enough. I was going to maybe get something that played into her strength, but it doesn't really matter. Alright, construction ship doesn't really have anything to do up here. Might as well head down to the Gruner system and actually colonize it as well. Uh, Governor Septimus Silas is leveled up to level 4. Look at those mutton chops. Food from jobs has increased, and he's out there at the Gaia's place as well. Perfect. That's where we get our food. The bread basket of the Empire. Eight farmers working out there. And how's the trade going? Is this built yet? No, it's just about to be done. Construction so online. the 10 trade now should be making its way back. Yeah, it's making its way back to Gargantua and then up. Seems like we do have a little bit of piracy. And apparently over at Augusta too. Along the Via Augusta. Why is this there? This shouldn't have any trade value on it, I don't think. That's the Ashmanac system. Yeah, nothing there. That's fine. Augusta. Yeah, so Augusta's got piracy. What's up with that? You can lower piracy just by patrolling the route. But I wonder, is it because of the fact that this place got raided recently? So it's... Yeah, it's piracy in every single system. Except... So, yeah, straight away at Trab, you just start getting some. Current piracy, 5.31. It doesn't hurt that much. Actually, oh yeah. So 11 makes it back. So 23 starts. We start with 23 trade coming out of Trab. Into Trab. Then it's 20. Then it's uh, you know 16, 15, and so on. All the way back to Saul. So we're losing half of it due to piracy. It's basically 10 energy. So you could stick a little fleet here. That doesn't cost you more than 10 energy and it'll balance out. I don't know if it's worth it though, you know? Unless that unless we're losing way more than that in terms of trade. I don't know if it's worth putting a ship on that. Maybe. Maybe if we just put like two or three little Corvettes. Let's test it out. We could just figure it out. So I'll just get a couple Velites. And we'll just create that little fleet. It's just a little patrol fleet. And we'll send them back and forth discovered. through this system. And they should, with only two... I don't think they're very expensive for energy. Does it say? Uh, power is 14. Yeah, I don't know, actually know what their upkeep is then. Just like out on the... While they're out. We'll find out, I suppose. Alright, this is done. So we'll just queue up another one. Colony development speed. I actually kind of need to get that, to be honest. But instead of just constantly holding you guys back. Strengthening the defenses. 14 months to figure this out. It'll take basically a year and two months. So following the devastating attack of one of our colonies, an initiative has been launched to find ways to better protect our people against the Vazarin menace. So there we go. We're starting to figure it out. We have some unemployment out here. Kind of don't want the alloy foundries, to be completely honest. But I do want one out here. This can maybe change now into something else. Science, maybe. Or actually... It needs to be something that at least provides a couple of jobs. 
Would be good to get a temple up and running again. Yeah, let's do that. And then we're going to start producing more moats. So we're going to get a temple back on Terra. We're going to get some uh, chemical plants and, and moats going. And then we're going to offload some pops to this planet that are going to be jobless. And they'll take over the jobs on the new alloy foundry that's been built there. Okay, so what do we have? Um, new colony start with an additional pop. Let's go. Archaeological site pending. The ghost warship. Of course, this is in the north. Northeast of the uh, galaxy, for us, of our territory. So the Carmack Charmack board. Further study of the ship found on Rodan 8 and various artifacts of aboard have granted us more insights into the Charmack society. The Charmack organized their hang on. Organized their clan-based society primarily based on physical strength and martial prowess. The strong would violently coerce their weaker brethren to follow their orders while fighting one another for dominance. The strongest of them would be called the Charmakar and serve as a leader of a clan. The life of, a Char of Charmak was short and brutal, but for those unfortunate enough to cross paths with them, it was much worse. They were a society of planet looters. Attacking planet-side settlements with reckless disregard for personal safety, killing and pillaging everything they came across. Very few of their activities didn't revolve around this never-ending looting. Most of those not involved in combat would work on manufacturing designing new weapons. The select few who lived to become too injured or infirm to fight or work would find employment creating art to inspire their comrades to pillage harder or, catalog or, or cataloging trophies gained in the recent raids. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, just all about war, basically. Alright, let's keep going. I feel like the music playlist is, has, is predisposed to play its own tracks when it's on shuffle. Like, I've only activated about maybe eight or nine of their own tracks, and all of them, all the other ones are pretty much mine. But mine never play. It's bias, I say. Um, so we got unemployment here, that's okay. We'll move them to Elysium as well. So I want Elysium because we want to increase that alloy production. That's what my focus is right now. We've got plenty of minerals. We have plenty of consumer goods. Food is fine. Energy is fine. So now is the time to now start investing into that, um, into alloys and bringing that up. Construction <laughs> online. All right, we've just expanded out there. Let's get all the stations. Seven uh, physics research, which is pretty good. That should help. Right, so the second the uh, pi anti piracy fleet is built, let's why not? Let's throw on a little uh, commander, get him up to speed. Sublight speed, that's perfect. He'll go through these areas earlier. Uh, sorry, not he, she. Kaisula Velius. And I want you just to patrol. You need to patrol to Saul, so get to Saul first. Just two ships, little anti piracy patrol. And they should start to lower the piracy, I think. Never really had to deal with it. I've never really focused on it too much. But it'd be nice to try and understand it as best as we can. Now, some of these places are... I've built up a bit. Okay. Let's just build a trade hub here. We don't need one. But having one allows me to build a trade... Whatever the other building is. And that gives me more trade value. Uh, what was it called? Off-World Trading Company. That's it. Man, we're taking a while to survey this place. Senate's halfway through its session. Rivalry. The Order of Enlightenment de declared rivalry of the uh, Belmacossa Creep. So we haven't yet figured out what those guys are all about. We'll have to read them soon. This war is still ongoing out here. Surely it's got to end soon. New technology discovered. What did we get? Crystal mines. Excellent. That allows us to make our own crystals now. And then we want gas extraction wells next. Oh yeah, so crystal infused plating is different than crystal forged plating. That's a level up. This wouldn't take that long to understand, actually. Oh. 
All right, Terra is about to just finally remove its, or get its first temple in place of the alloy foundries. Get some priests on the go, get some unity increase. We're making 104 right now. Let's see what it changes to. Uh, next month, I guess, when we wait. So we're on 104, and now we're on 115, okay? Two unemployed pops, and why is that? Because we made two priests, and we got rid of two metallurgists. The metallurgists should have just automatically swapped to becoming priests, but I think they were actually promoted up from the workers, and that's why now they're just two. It doesn't matter. I'm going to move them to Elysium anyway. Um, so it's not a, it's not a big deal. Discovered. And then we're making the chemical plant. So Elysium's got its thing, does it? Peace between the Kozier and the Dagatani Kingdom. The Dagatani Kingdom made peace. And oh, wow. Interesting. Oh, weird. It's a little border gory. But the Anu Dawenu Empire was created as an ally or subject of the Kozier Trade League out of four occupied systems. So the defenders got one system as well. They got briskly, it says. This one here. So the Dagatani took a system, and then the Kozier took this system, but they actually made it a subsidiary of them. Of them. Let's just pause that. There they are. They've only got one planet. Peaceful traders. <laughs> that's a that's a weird change of heart for these ones. <laughs> pathetic inferior and pathetic. So they are a they have a commercial pact. They're actually not a subsidiary. They're just an ally. Not even an ally? That's weird. I would have thought they'd be a vassal. Am I missing something? They, they're definitely not a vassal, though. No? They're just another trade megacorp. Hmm. That's pretty weird. I don't believe that they could do that to this empire. It's just like this crazy, barbaric, violent, aggressive empire. And it's like, oh yeah, we're just going to make them peaceful traders. I mean, this government's going to fail if I've ever seen it. But we'll see. I guess we'll see what happens to them. Migration treaty proposal. Let's do construction online. Alrighty, uh, society research is finished. And what did we just get? Just to remember, we just got the tile blocker removal thing. Uh, yeah, let's get this one removed. The tile blocker for dangerous wildlife. A central research bureau. I'm gonna get that in case it doesn't pop up again. That seems better. Takes a while to get. 29 months. Central Research Bureau. A new building. And then unlocks development of advanced technologies. New weapons can't work by themselves. They also need reactors to power them up. Engines to move them around. And much more. Interesting. Science directors provide amenities and science. Job-based production 21, 21, 21. All research. Wow. Yeah, definitely get that. We'll slam that down in Tiberium. Just rivalries, things like that. Defensive pact with the Kosher Trade League is, has happened now between those two. So yeah, they actually created an independent empire. Maybe these are the Dawenu that wanted peace. Uh, the Riggin Commerce Exchange. All oh, right, another um, enclave. Now, speaking on behalf of the Riggin Commerce Exchange, we have facilitated trade negotiations between interested parties of our, on our station in the Arbatrius system for more than a thousand of your years. Oh no, I meant to... <laughs> Normally the button up there is to zoom in. Well, whatever. It doesn't really matter where they are. They're not in my territory anyway. The ones we have in our territory are here, and they're growing in opinion. Up to nine. So our boys are the uh, Mutagen Merchant Guild, which we'll talk to in future. That's where our colony is being established. They're over halfway done. And then we can Systems activate the life seeding. In fact, I wonder, could we activate it while the colony is forming? Uh... Just leave that for now. No, we have to wait for the decision until the planet's formed. Oh shit, there's titanic life here. On this planet. Which gives us an increase to society research. The life forms of this planet are built on a massive scale. And can be incredibly dangerous, even without meaning any harm. Uh, we might have problems with them. Probably should have checked that. Now this reminds me that in the faction screen, I think... These people wanted me to live on a world with 
Adopting the World Shaper Ascension Perk will please them. I'm pretty sure they had a thing for like living with Gaia life or something, like with Titanic life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've already got it. Um, owning a world with Titanic with a Titanic life or Xeno Preserve building will please the Vigilant Natare. So that increases their approval by 15%. That's a really good one to have. So they're 100%. They're super approving of us. It's the most influence we can get out of them. So you'd want more pops to be like them. And they're the second most popular uh, political faction right now. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> Governor, uh, we've got an environmental engineer, Tiberia Volusena. And that's the governor out here, right? So clear tile blockers are even cheaper for her. Or even faster as well. So let's do some of that. Might as well get these planets removing what they can. So that's it. Is there only... Yeah, there's loads of stuff to remo remove out here. Impenetrable Taiga, Titanic life forms. Those, oh man, the art looks so good for that. All right, we'll have to wait. We're over our empire sprawl limit. I think that's because one of our things got destroyed over at Augusta. Because Augusta is the um, bureaucratic center. Oh no, it was, it was commercial. Research project concluded. Planetary defense initiative concluded. So this is us researching to understand about the attack. Since the start of this ambitious endeavor, many approaches have been presented and discarded again. Yet one does seem very promising. Long have we use, been using shields to protect our spaceships and stations, but applying this technology on a planetary scale has always been seen as economically unfeasible. However, given the Vazarin menace looming over the Roman Empire, long-standing proponents of this technology have finally succeeded in gaining the necessary funding to pursue their goals. Start the research. So we get the research option gained for planetary shields, and it's already 25% done. Was that worth a year of research? I don't know. But we're gonna get the next one as well. The next one takes 20, it takes full two years. Understand the subspace rift investigation. We're still baffled as to how this rift in space time is formed. We actually, this might allow us to understand wormholes. Now we don't have any wormholes, but we are neighboring an empire that does. So maybe it'll help. That's gonna halt. So we basically halted physics research for three years here. Just FYI. Right, so Elysium has its first Mega Forge. These are just regular foundries. This is a Mega Forge. It's slightly bigger. You can kind of see the image slightly different. And that's going to give us a lot more jobs. Five, I think, for each one, and then two for all the other ones that aren't upgraded yet. And then we can maintain two of them. So we're going to upgrade another one. And alloy production should start to come up slowly. Of course, it's staying the same right now because we're deleting alloy foundry buildings back on Terra. But there's a good reason for that. You know, we're, we're turning this, which has two jobs, into a building that only has one. So let's resettle as well. Uh, this pop here. Oh, crap. We've got our first robot as well. It's actually finally built. There it is. Oh, nice. They look awesome as well. So, its job currently is a farmer. It's good for me. So, what's its trait? Immortality. Habitability, 200%. So, we can now land robots. Let's figure out. Can we colonize with them? No, it's not inside my border. We actually can't just yet. Maybe we need to give them the rights to colonize. Not possible due to... The droids technology is required. Okay, so we're not just we're not quite there yet. All right, nice. Everything's going pretty well. We've got some scientists not doing anything here. Okay, you can finally get that. That's the exile. He's probably gonna die soon. He's quite old, 77. An insult from the Norilga swarm. Don't want to get too comfortable down here at Gaia. Also, I forgot to patrol. So patrol. All the way out to Augusta. And then it'll just go out that way and come back. So let's see how this goes for the piracy in the area. So at the moment, 38% makes it back. So that's pretty low. Only 38% makes it back. So after we do this, we'll see what it comes up to. 
Strength from all places. Having probed the frozen landscapes of the moon Lyrum 5A, we think that we have struck something big. Science officer the Exile speaks of a bacterial life form unlike any other. It bonds with other individuals to form large blankets that are durable yet light and also acts like solar cells. They absorb solar energy with surprisingly low efficiency loss percentage, most likely a result of evolution favoring those who could gather more heat in the harsh climate. Our researchers back home could surely find some use for this information. Send to our homeworld for study, it'll take a while to process, or find a military use. Hmm. Absorbing solar energy. Economy. I'll go with economy. Or send to our homeworld for further study. Everything military I feel like gets outdated pretty quick, so that's why I went with economy. It might be different. Alright, this guy's got nothing left to do. Alright, yeah, cool. We can come through. Don't go there. There's most likely something in... Oh, I guess we can find out about it. What's here? The Ravenous Ilkor. Oh, yeah, cool. So we can do the... Um, we can continue researching the different life forms that we're looking for. As long as it's within people's territory, we can access. So let's do that. There's an anomaly here. We'll get this one first. Satellite cloud. Sometimes it gives you things, not just things to the system. So even though it's not in our system, it might be still beneficial. Robot debris. Upon closer examination, the smashed droids on the surface... So this is the excavation down in Grunthurst. Um, smashed droids on the surface of this asteroid appear to originate from two distinct cultures. Technologically, the droids must have been, have been evenly matched when they were still functional, but there are many subtle differences that hint at different design origins. Curious. Our energy development researchers have made progress with the samples we sent from Lyrum 5A. They've been able to develop a new type of solar cell using organisms as a template. They are much more efficient at storing energy and will provide a boost to all power plants. Marvelous. Enhanced solar power modifier added, giving the following effect energy credits from jobs. Boom. Is that forever? Awesome. Or at least for now. 5% energy. I'll take it. This is the greatest song on the playlist, by the way. IMO. We haven't gotten any military tech in a while. I think... I don't know. Site 10667 Override or an Aurelga Swarm. That's who we're preparing for. We're at 28 alloys right now. We need to start moving our pops over. And then we need to also start getting stuff like crystal plant. Uh, we don't need crystal plants. We do need lightheric gas though. Or exotic gas. So I'll wait to get that. But for now, we'll resettle these pops on Lysium. Just making sure I'm doing it right. Three uh, specialists without jobs. As soon as this building is done, that's three new jobs that they're going to operate on straight away. Get some commercial zones here because the uh, amenities are quite low, despite stability being high enough. A ruler is without job here. Oh, because we create a noble every time we have 50 pops. That's why. So one of our nobles doesn't have a reason to be a noble anymore. Hmm, interesting. There's not much I could do about that. Might have to let them demote. Unless we build a senate house and move them there. Alright, good stuff. Built our defenses here. It's also upgrading to a star hold. The first, oh no, the second star hold we'll ever have made. Construction a little thicker. This is the machine ships ship set, by the way. Awesome work that's been done by Arix, I think the name is. Um, I follow them on Twitter, and uh, she's posting like updates and new ships and stuff and designs that's that she's working on. They look so good. So it's cool to see. It's like, I mean, I thought it's basically done. I guess it is, but. She's adding even more to it, which is nice. So we're enhancing our defenses here. Nanite dispensary field. Armor nullification. What does this one do? 
Shield nullification. Okay, cool. So it's gonna spend a bunch of our alloys there, but this thing's gonna start getting a bit thicker now. New technology discovered. Hey, -o, we got exotic gases right there. All right, cool. Our little fleet is doing the work up to 48% now. So it is climbing. It's climbing back up. We just need to refresh these areas as we go through them, basically. Keep that piracy down. So pirates will be like, oh, yeah, like, there's fleets patrolling, like, so piracy gets squashed. If piracy is bad enough, an actual fleet does spawn that you have to, like, engage with. So, uh, machine templates, carrier operations, corvette hull points, crystal infused plating. Gonna go with the infused plating. No, go with corvette hull points first. So tempted to go with this just because it matches. They'll do it faster, but we'll leave it. Just a simple tech for now. Improve our Corvettes. Scientist Neus Laronius leveled up, and Scientist Servius Lantidius leveled up. Great. All right, it's been a pretty, uh, pretty tame episode. Just kind of like. Pushing along, doing the economy, increasing the alloys. I want to keep increasing them for a while. The Charmacarade. The Charmacarade. The purpose of the ship found in orbit above Rodan 8 has become even clearer. The vessel was a flagship of one of the most prominent and prosperous clans in the Charmac Horde and a site of regular meetings of Charmacars from all over the Horde known as the Charmacarade. The clans were mostly insular, but occasionally they had to gather together to establish alliances, coordinate attacks, or address other concerns of the entire horde. On average, a Charmaker raid ended with 53% of the Charmakars in agreement and the other 47% dead. <laughs> Something else I've meaning, been meaning to do is do this, the secrets of the bow. By the way, our thing is only active for 300 more days. We are getting close to running out of that. How long till this is done? Three more months. Okay, we're very we're cutting it very, very fine. Very, very fine indeed. But once that colony is up and running, then we'll activate it. I mean we might keep the decision forever, I don't know. But I don't want to risk it. I'm pretty sure like it says only while the thing is active. Let's check it. Does it say? Granting the ability to turn one non ecumenopolis non hive mind, non machine world planet into a Gaia world. So maybe we do just stack them, but just in case we don't, we'll get it done beforehand. Planet's colonization is just about to finish in one more month now. And we're going to turn this titanic life tundra world into a Gaia world, a perfect world. And I guess I'll be interested to see what happens to the tiles. We've conquered another world. All right, here we go. Nova Egyptus. Colonia Egyptus, really. Yeah, I'm interested to see what happens to all these, if it changes or not. All right, here we go. So decisions. Mastery of nature <laughs> to improve our districts. New bowel life seeding. Our geneticists have extracted the secret of the bowel organism's ability to terraform a planet by deploying rapidly reproducing plant life modified with specially selected bowel genetic data to the planet. We can terraform entire biospheres at a fraction of the cost. And there we go. It is instant. Our environmental specialists are pleased to report that the terraforming process on Nova Egyptus is complete. The planet has been successfully transformed into a Gaia world. Owing to our deployment of laboratory-created plant hybrids containing carefully selected segments of the bowel genetic code. Once again, as a result of the process itself not quite fully understood to our geneticists, a number of new bowel populations have appeared planetside, emerging when terraforming neared completion. We suppose we shall have to deal with them. <laughs> Excellent. More slaves or incredible? Um, well, we suppose we shall have to deal with them. I'm going to propose a vote. Let's check these guys out. So this planet has spawned this plant life now when we use this. And like I said, I was privy to this beforehand because someone let me know in the last episode, basically, that we've now created new bowel. Now, I don't know what they... I didn't know what they actually have as traits. So let's find out. Guy world preference. Venerable. They live long. If they're leaders. Uh, food from jobs, 15%. 
food from livestock if they're if they get eaten by the Norilga swarm, for instance. Uh, pop housing usage is reduced, growth speed is reduced, and they're fanatically pacifist. Are they all fanatically pacifist? Seems so. So, I guess the interesting thing is then they're just good at food, right? They they'd be good farmers. Now the question is, do we? keep these guys as slaves to work the farms. Ideally, they would just always work the farms. But we know they have a troubled history, a very sad history, where they were decimated over and over, severed from their hive mind or devolved from their hive mind, undergone a lot of pain. And we encountered the last one in a vat and we basically can rejuvenate their population. But do we do so in the form of slavery? Or we do so in the form of given them citizenship within the empire. So let's have a look at the options. Set the rights, slaves, residents, undesirables, full citizenship. They're too alien for full citizenship. So the vote would be residents, slaves, or perhaps even undesirable. I guess I should levy that question as well. Although I would rather not <laughs> personally, but slaves and residents is what I would be leaning towards. So we'll put the vote with all three options what is their citizenship going to be of the new bow? Remember to check the votes at ROP underscore tweets. This will be a short turnaround time for this one. So you need to get to it ASAP. Because, of course, I'll be recording the next few episodes very soon after this as it's the weekend. Uh, as it's about to be. I recorded this one the day of upload uh, for those interested. Um, so, I mean, that's awesome though. We have a guy world, 22 slot, big thick ass guy world out here. Let's have a look at the, so the tile blockers and all that is still there. Uh, the Titanic life is still there. That's all still there. So yeah, we just have four unemployed pops. So let's get started with a little bit. Actually, you know what? This is perfect. We're going to move them to Gaia because this is the place that has all the food. Eight farmer jobs just waiting here. So let's move them here. So we're going to shift them off that planet. One, two, three, four. Cost 50. The other thing, actually, which after I just remembered, if the galactic uh, market gets founded, which it probably will any minute now, we can then sell them on the galactic market as slaves and make a lot of money, per per potentially a lot of money. But then they could be freed or anything could happen. And someone else would have them. So think of it that way too. That's going to be another option. So the vote's going to be really, how's, how are we going to handle their citizenship? Or will we sell them as well? So there can be four options. Oh, interestingly, the Nerilga, oh, the Kozier Trade League got out here. How did they get through Nerilga territory? Oh no, it's site, one, oh, sorry, I thought it was up here. They went through site 10667 overrides territory. Now they're exploring out here. Hmm. It's kind of cool that we can see it. We, of course, share our, uh, what do you call it, active sensors, so we can see each other. All right, well, back down on Nova Egyptus. We've removed those pops now, so let's just get started with some basics. Removing some tiles, building a city district. Awesome. Terra still has that ruler problem. Um, I mean, I guess if I move that ruler out to Nova Egyptus, then they'll probably have a job sooner, soon enough. So this ruler can head out there. I, yeah, so let me find wh what's going to get a an upgrade fast. Two pops. Nine. This one's going to get one soon. So there's no rulers here. But when we move this pop from Terra to, uh, to Colonia Pacifica. So Terra, Colonia Pacifica. And we're going to say, yeah, this unemployed ruler, go to Pacifica, that's going to give them 10, that allows this to be upgraded, and that will give them the job. Done. <laughs> Figured it out, sort of. I'm going to go with robot assembly plants out here as well. And then we're going to get them cracking on the mining. All right, good. Yeah, we're solving all that issue. All right, our observations reveal hundreds of advanced stations siphoning charged plasma from the star's corona. Uh-oh. Don't like that word anymore. 
Despite uh, deposited in large containers, it was likely supposed to be loaded on ships and delivered to processing centers. Unfortunately, these stations appear to have been left unmaintained for ages, and most of the storage containers are cracked and leaking. The entire system is too unstable to be safely repaired or manipulated. However, the easily accessible plasma will be a boon for our industry. That is useful. Eight energy. That goes to the Kozier Trade League, of course. I hope they don't try to take this area as well. Um, okay, let's take a look at the fleet now as well, by the way. Is there anything new? They have better sensors that can be put on them. Yeah, basically the same, but now they have tracking. Construction online. And there's no other changes. Still level 2 and level 3 for these things. Still level 2 and level 1. Uh, level 2 for those. So, yep. Our fleets don't have crazy tech anymore or anything... Well, they never did. <laughs> they don't have any new crazy tech. So what's our moat situation looking like? We're, we're still making plus three right now. And that's after this. And there's six available jobs here. The clerks are the ones that have the priority. As we want to keep the immunities high. So yeah, let's just do this one more time. So that's 15 metallurgist jobs. So we're up to 12 now. So we're making plus 40. So we've slightly increased it. Admiral Faustus Novius has died at the age of 88. He died in the Gaia system. What a ledge. <laughs> uh, and he had, a, he, of course, he had his triumph for defeating the Tyrene Republic's fleets after suffering a couple defeats. Not an undefeated commander by no means, but nevertheless uh, got victory in the end and combined with Queso Tadius uh, using the land forces. So no need for a commander just yet. We'll put someone on that soon. And then I just realized it shows us our piracy. Yeah, so our suppression is 20. So this actually just shows you straight up what you're suppressing in the area, which is pretty good. So that is enough to suppress this entire place. And they're coming back now, I think. Oh no, this keep going. Boom! The birth of the galactic market. The first resolution is being passed. And this means it is a regrettable fact. It is a regrettable fact that we have consistently failed to quash the illicit trade with the Xenos. Equally regrettable is that the economic benefits of a largely anonymous forum for trade decoupled from international relations cannot be denied. In the coming years, independent traders and government agencies will be looking to establish a quasi-centralized hub for galactic commerce. The economic gains from, play from playing host to such a nexus might well outweigh the burden of harboring alien goods, so we can choose to promote one of our worlds for this purpose. Nominate for Galactic Market Hub begins the founding of the Galactic Market event chain. Oh, right, so it hasn't started yet. We can nominate a planet to say, hey, we want this one to be where the Galactic Market is housed. Um, I'm guessing it's based on who has the most trade value in that place. I don't know. I would imagine that the Kozier Trade League are going to win. Unless there's something bigger out this way. Or up here, up here, that could win. Uh, lost prototype ship discovered the exile is ecstatic. After more, after more thorough scans, the anomaly it turns out to be a spaceship. Intriguingly, it's one of ours. Our crew recognized it as one of our prototype FDL-capable ships thought to be lost on a test flight years ago. Its orbit is unstable, and the ship is slowly descending into the atmosphere. It seems to be undamaged, but energy readings are minimal. We received no response to our hailing. In order to be able to further investigate what has happened to the ship and its crew, its orbit has to first be stabilized. The Exile has already come up with a plan. Save this piece of history that's 20 influence, or who cares about some old ship? Ah, oh, save it. There could be people still on it. Somehow. 20 influence. Stabilize it. Oh, we got it. Just like that. It's a science ship. Is that it? Oh, no. Maybe we can't move it yet. Stabilize the ship. Okay, it's working on it. The resolution was passed. So, the next resolution that's going to be popped up, the Senate's in recess for uh, a couple of years, two, two to three years, and then the next one will go up, which is going to be regulatory facilitation, and then we can vote on it when it's up. I wonder, does opposing it have anything? No. Opposing it doesn't, like, lower it down or anything. <clears throat> Okay, so before we wrap up this episode, we want to read um, maybe two more empires. So we read about the Remnants of Alaria, the Belmacossa Creep, the Valdenor Zealots, 
and the Veilon Cluster. So next, well, let's read about, I guess, the Order of Enlightenment, and then maybe the Traxian Empire, seeing as they're one of the biggest. So let's find out a bit more about the Order of Enlightenment. So a megacorp as well. They are a mega church. They're peaceful traders. They are xenophile, fanatically spiritualist, elitism, and competitive. Their civics are gospel of the masses. The Mega Corporation embraces a curious blend of commercial and spiritualistic values in which the positions of ordained minister and corporate officer have merged into a single role. They can build a temple of prosperity. Public relations specialists, so they're PR specialists, love PR people, who doesn't? Globalism, it's not just the fascination for the unknown and unfamiliar, what, what drives us into space, but also the profitable deals we can get out of it. All right, let's learn a bit more about them as a species. They're called the Bari. Uh, so let's have a little look at their weed, uh, their world. I was going to say weed. <laughs> Makes kind of sense for a plantoid. So they actually have life seeded. So they start on a Gaia world. Man, this galaxy has so many perfect worlds. And they actually start with little rings around their world as well. So let's find out more about the Bari. I'll just read it from their actual diplomacy screen. Okay, so, according to the ancient sources, the Nexus was once a barren and hostile environment, but was visited by an all-powerful god, Zoha, who breathed consciousness into the floor and left behind ancient lessons for self-betterment. So powerful were Zoha's teachings that the ancient flora achieved a state of true enlightenment, enabling them to terraform the Nexus into the paradise world it is now with just their minds. The Order of Enlightenment religion formed to protect Zoha's sacred teachings, but through several tiered exclusive memberships, now even the common Bari can gain access. Now that 99.98% of the population are part of the religion, it's time to open it up to the galaxy. It's become questionable whether the Order of Enlightenment ever really believed the legend of Zoha. After all, they were the ones who wrote it. So that is the Bari. So let's find out about their traits. Their species traits. Let's go do Empire species. God, there's so many now, it takes quite a while to load. The Bari. So, they have the Gaia World preference, as they live on a Gaia World. They are thrifty. They are charismatic. They have a keen sense. They are non-adaptive, so they kind of want to stay on their world, I guess. And their pop growth speed is a bit slow. And that's basically it. So, a plantoid species that live on a Gaia World that are... Pretty charismatic, pretty thrifty, know how to make a make a dollar, and they're seemingly shilling some religion as a way to do so. <laughs> so that is them. They currently have... They're currently at war with the Valon, and the Valon occupy two of their systems. And they themselves have two planets. Is that it? They have four worlds in total, but it seems like they're under occupation. Or maybe at least one of them is. Three of them they have themselves. One of them must be out here... They're obviously in a war. The current war is pretty even on both sides, but it looks like they're getting the better of it, the Valon. A plantoid war. A lot of plantoids in this area. We have Balmacosacre, Valon Cluster, and the Order of Enlightenment. All right, the next empire we're going to read is going to be the Traxian Empire. It'll be the final one for today. These guys, by the way, they're thick. They seem to be the biggest contender in the galactic uh, community right now. Uh, and that's based on their diplomatic weight. What the hell is this? An orphan gate? I've never heard of that. A gateway deliberately altered to be disconnected from the galactic network. What the hell? Is it like its own gateway that only they can use? Maybe. We'll have to find out in future. Alright, so, Netraxia Asaka. <laughs> so these guys are a jingoistic regime. Uh, regime, sorry, regime. Regime. The Traxian Empire. Holds an election upon ruler death to select a new ruler. This form of authoritarian governance is headed by a xenophobic demagogue, and na notions of national supremacy and manifest destiny dominate the politics. So, uh, their ethics are authoritarian, they're fanatically xenophobic, and fanatic mil militarists. So, these are a bit of a bad guy, I guess. So I guess that's why they're so strong. Um, their civics are they have a police state. To quash any traces of dissent, the population in this repressive society is carefully monitored and controlled by a large internal police force. They then have uh, Conqueror, 
A strong sense of nationalistic pride permeates all layers of the society and a warrior culture. The society has developed into a hardy warrior culture. Martial prowess is valued above all else, and true glory can only be found on the field of battle. Replaces entertainers with duelists. Duelists turn alloys into unity, amenities, and naval cap. Interesting. And then they're called the Ox Brack. So let's have a zoom in on their capital, Nectraxia. Continental preference, I guess. So, due to their unique biological makeup, Maybe we should read... No, we'll read this first, and then we'll check out their traits. Uh, the Oxbraxi do not feel pain. Even under intense conditions, they only feel slight discomfort or pressure, rather than the agony felt by most other species. It's theorized that this is why they don't empathize or seem to recognize the plight of others, and why their society is built off the backs of the Adiks, or uh, the Adiks, a lesser intelligent and weaker species that co-evolved on Nitraxia. The Adiks do feel pain, but with oh sorry, the Adiks do feel pain. But with over 1,000 generations of servitude, they become weak and docile due to the absence of any selective breeding. Under the rule of Supreme Leader Hask Timak, the Ox Braxes uh, prosperity grows, but so too does their needs. It is time for them to find a new, stronger workforce capable of sustaining an empire. So of course, no, he is still alive. Wow, he's 110. I was going to say he was he must be dead by now, but Hask Timak. 110 years old. Wow. All right, let's find out a bit more about them. The Ox Braxy. Uh, I must have gone past it. There we go. So, continental preference, intelligent, traditional, strong, decadent, so they want slaves, and then a right of secession. This species has a rigid hierarchy and lower ranking members must obey their superiors. Lesser members can challenge the higher ranks for their position through a right of secession. Once a challenge is issued, they are bound to their goal until victory or death. These are like biological traits, but sometimes they do you know, feel a little bit more like societal or cultural things, but that's all right. I guess, yeah, so there's no trait that reflects it, but they just don't feel pain, allegedly. All right, there we go. So we've kind of read almost about every empire now. We have the Thogan Emergence, Colden Consortium, Voss City States. I'm assuming there's an empire here or here. There's gotta, I mean, I don't know if there's gotta be. I should count them up. I know how many there are, but this is like a whole patch of empty terror. Oh no, there is something here as well. Yeah, okay, cool. So yeah, there's still some more to discover. All right, that's gonna be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.